So I heard you finally did it. You finally bought the C6 Corvette you wanted. And I'm proud of you. I know you want to start throwing in all the mods that you have saved in your browsing tabs, but not so fast, my glissy gobbler. You gotta think like the elite driver. What would the elite driver do? So on this video, I'm gonna explain the first things you should do when you first buy your Corvette. All right, Mr. Elite Driver, we're in the back of the car where the battery's at. That's gonna be the first thing I'm gonna recommend you do as soon as you get your Corvette. Especially if this is gonna be a secondary car if it's not gonna be your daily driver. Because these cars are notorious for having the battery die after two weeks of not driving it. So if this is your daily driver, my dude, you're wilding. But if you're a peasant like the rest of us, who are either too broke or too scared to drive this daily, you might want to consider getting a yellow top Optima battery. And it doesn't have to be an Optima as long as it's an AGM deep cycle battery. It's happened to me a lot of times that I go to drive my car after two weeks of not driving it and the battery is completely dead. But I think the reason why the battery is dying so fast in this car, I don't have a parasitic drain or anything like that. I think since this car is constantly looking for a key fob battery and this was new technology back in those days, it hadn't been perfected that well. So for some reason the computer is always alive and it causes that battery to drain. So as an elite driver, you want to make sure your machine is in top tier shape for top tier driving. So what does that mean? That means doing all the boring maintenance right off the bat. So what I suggest doing next will be flushing out all the old fluids, making sure you got the right stuff in it. And that's gonna help you identify any potential issues with the car. You wanna make sure you get the right type of brake fluid that it has the proper boiling point and it doesn't overheat in you. Same with the clutch fluid. It's a good idea to flush out the cooling because if you have the incorrect cooling, it could potentially damage the water pump. So if you flush the differential, the engine oil, you can see the condition of the oil. If you know the fluid is in good condition, it doesn't hurt to swap it out, have it all fresh, but it will definitely help you catch anything that is going wrong with the car. Now, can you really trust the person that sold you the car? Even if the car is more than 40,000 miles, or even just by age, you should be replacing these fluids either way. Don't trust the person that sold you the car, telling you they flushed out all these fluids, that they babied the car. They probably beat up babies, or they probably flushed them down the toilet, so don't trust the wanker. Now, if you are flushing out the engine oil, I would recommend going with a magnetic drain plug and an OEM filter, because this is gonna be like double protection, and it will help you catch anything you don't want going through your rods and your shafts. Think about that. Oh, hey there. So another wrenching idea for your C6 would be upgrading this plastic radiator, which I haven't done, upgrading it to a nice aluminum radiator. Corvettes tend to run hotter than the smogs we get every two years, so this would definitely be a good idea. Uh, an aluminum radiator is gonna keep it nice and icy, like a 4PF chain, like a bust down rolly, and that's exactly what the car needs. Another quick mod you can do will be adjusting the height dropping it down lower so you can get that perfect fitment that I went over in my last video. So go and watch that too, after you finish watching this one. So I know you're still a bit of a glissy gobbler, you're not quite the elite driver yet, so you want to click off the video because I haven't told you any crazy mods or anything exciting, but these are things that are very important and very necessary to get done as soon as you get your car. And let me tell you in on a little secret that maybe you haven't realized yet because you've been so busy thinking about all the cool mods you want to do, and that's gonna be taking care of all the interior routers that these cars come with. Because let's face it, GM interior quality wasn't at the top of the game during these years. It was definitely not C7 quality. So the first time I drove this car without any music playing, I heard more creaks and rattles than my stay at the Red Roof Inn Motel. And you know, this gave me a little bit of PTSD because it reminded me of all those warranty noise and rattle complaints. And I always thought customers were such bitches for complaining about this thing. I always wonder, how come they don't just turn up the radio and that way they won't hear the rattle? But the first time I was driving it without music, trying to hear the exhaust sound, I noticed all these rattles and it was actually pretty annoying. So I started tracking down every single rattle, one by one. And that's probably something you should do too. All right, so in my last video, people were saying how I've been taking off the target top wrong the whole time. They're saying that the easiest way to take it off is standing outside of the car. That's stupid, that, there's no way that can work. There's no, there's no way. Why would grabbing the top and... Oh shit. Oh. It wasn't so bad. I think I've been doing it wrong this whole time, what the fuck? 
Fuck you guys. Okay, so believe it or not, I've had multiple people walk up to me and ask me this car is a 2018, 2016, even 2020. The reason why that is because this car looks a lot more expensive and more modern than all the regular cars of this age. That's why I keep on saying that these cars looks are timeless. Something really good that you can do is upgrading the interior electronics. It won't look tacky because people already expect this car to have those sort of features because it, it definitely feels newer. One thing I would definitely recommend upgrading would be the steering wheel. Getting something a little bit nicer, maybe thicker, Alcantara, carbon fiber, maybe upgrading the shifter, parking brake handle, getting a heads up display, all these little touches that are gonna make the car feel a lot newer and a lot better. These are some of the best mods you can do because these are gonna be things that you're gonna see every single time you get in the car and it's definitely gonna enhance the driving experience. You should definitely upgrade the sound system and upgrade the head unit and go with something with a backup camera. So let me tell you guys a little story. A few years back, me and my brother used to work together and he parked his S2000 right behind me. It was late at night, it was pretty dark. I was trying to get out of work and we were inside of the shop. I was backing up slowly and I thought I had enough clearance, but I guess I didn't because I actually ended up bumping into his S2000 front end and I actually moved it an extra four inches with three easy steps. At this point, he's watching the video trying to figure out if this is a joke to make the video a little bit funny. But I'm sorry, bro, this, this actually happened. And the reason why I didn't tell you is because you were going to get a new bumper anyways. You weren't tripping about it and I guess I never got the chance. But now that I told you, I feel, I feel a lot lighter. Oh yeah, backup camera. Backup camera is a really good option because the body of this C6 Corvette is made out of paper mache. So if you bump into something, we're backing up. We're gonna wreck the whole car. So yeah, we've talked about a lot of boring mods. So what would be the first real mod that I would do? Let me tell you. And that's gonna be the ground effects kit. I always talk about this. It doesn't have to be carbon fiber, but it definitely helps the look of the car. Cause without this lip, it looks really plain in the front. You gotta have the side skirt. It makes the wheels look better. But the most important thing, We'll be making sure you got a spoiler in the back of the C6. A C6 without a rear spoiler, it looks bald as hell. You don't want that. It doesn't look right. It's gotta have some sort of wicker bill, a wing, a little spoiler like this one. There's a reason why they all have it. You gotta have it in your Corvette. It's worth it. You're not gonna regret it. Just freaking look at this thing. You wanna make it look good or not? You tell me, bro. Get those ground effects, get that spoiler, Get this thing looking nice. Look at it. Just doing these little details is going to make the car look 3,000 times hotter than a Ford catalytic converter on a Crown Vic. If you know, you know. Another fun mod you can do, especially if you have a base model, will be upgrading the exhaust. You can go with something like a Corsa exhaust system. You can just upgrade to the NPP OEM exhaust system. But this is the best return on investment because every time you start up the car or you drive down the road, you're gonna enjoy that sound. You're gonna get your money's worth out of it. So another really good mod idea would be to get a set of cheap spare tires and wheels. You can swap into those tires anytime you wanna act a fool, put on a smoke show because you already took care of all the maintenance. You already know your car is gonna handle it and the C6 Corvette can handle it all night long. The LS3 can take a beating. The LS3 will love it more than white girls love Chick-fil-A. You saw me take off the Targa. Now, the, another really good mod would be getting that glass top. And this is a good idea because when a shoddy Sita gets in your car, they're gonna be able to see the sky, they're gonna see the stars, and they're gonna think that they're in a Rolls Royce. That's something that they would definitely not expect from a 2010 car. So not all Corvette owners are created equally. If you're watching this video, chances are you're probably a young enthusiast who just wants a nice sports car for uh, a good price. But there's actually a lot of Corvette owners that are pretty wealthy. They got deep pockets. They bought the car when it was new. And these videos most likely don't appeal to them. But I'm going to include them in this video just for once. Just for now. So come here, Robert. Come here. Let me tell you a little secret. Now, when your wife hears this idea, she's not going to be too interested. But you got to convince her. And that will be getting a, a nice full detail. Maybe paint correction. To making sure that this paint looks as deep and as shiny as possible. And if you're really balling, you can do a ceramic coat. PPF just to make sure that you don't have to worry about scratches in the future and also it's gonna help the resale value of the car which you really care about but we don't. Now if you want to get some more performance mods out of your Corvette I think I would recommend would be upgrading that intake, injectors, coils, maybe the throttle body and the good thing about the C6 Corvette is that those things can be done so fast and so easy it's definitely faster than the self checkout line at Target and it's not as expensive. Also if you live in a state that's not California first off I envy you. The benefit that you have is that you can throw headers on this car 
make it sound even better, make it perform a little bit better and not have to worry about a cop pulling you over and sending you to the gulag. So if you are going to be pushing a lot more power, I would recommend getting a CAT scan like this Mighty Mouse system that I have right here. Really good quality, but it also is going to keep your intake nice and clean. It's going to keep it from getting contaminated with oil. It's going to trap all the excess blow by in here. Now if you're really feeling spicy, you want to go faster, then you might start to consider adding something like a cam, building the engine, or maybe force induction like a supercharger and these cars tend to handle that very well and you can still daily drive them without any issues so go and watch the playlist where I completely rebuilt my engine threw a cam in it and it might convince you to do it or it might convince you to avoid it and I'm going to tell you about the other things you should avoid and that's going to be in the next video